Thank you very much, and it's good to see you all. Hope you had a great weekend at your convention, and we're going to have a great convention coming up, and I look forward to it. But before I discuss a very historic breakthrough in our fight against the China virus, I'd like to provide an update on the recent wildfires in California and the storms in the Gulf of Mexico. Yesterday, I approved a major disaster declaration for California. Spoke to Governor Newsom as they battled two of the worst wildfires in the history of their state. That continues. The federal government has already deployed over 26,000 first responders and personnel to battle the wildfires. We're working very closely with the governor and very closely with uh, a lot of great state representatives and local representatives, and we'll take care of the situation. But we have 26,000 first responders already. Our hearts go out to the thousands of families who have lost their homes as we grieve for the families of two first responders and five residents who have tragically lost their lives. It's been a very horrific fire one of the, the biggest we've ever seen. My administration is also closely monitoring Hurricane Marco and Tropical Storm Laura, which are coming in rapidly. Hurricane Marco is expected to make landfall in Louisiana tomorrow, and Tropical Storm Laura is expected to hit Louisiana two days later. This is somewhat unprecedented, the, the scope of the storms and also the fact that they come so quickly after one another. Both storms have the potential of gathering strength before they make landfall and could cause significant damage across the Gulf Coast and also in Puerto Rico. We have everybody stationed and ready to go in Puerto Rico and the Gulf Coast. And we have tremendous and tremendous people. We have uh, FEMA is lined up. We have the uh, Coast Guard ready. The Coast Guard is, has done a fantastic job. They do so many — they do such good work, and we want to thank our great Coast Guard. I'm asking all Americans in the storm's path to follow the instructions of your state and local governments very closely. And I've approved emergency declarations for Puerto Rico and for Louisiana. FEMA is mobilized on the ground and is ready to help. They will be in, in there very quickly, very, very quickly. And uh, 
I spoke to Governor John Bell Edwards also of Louisiana, and I've uh, informed him, and at his request also, a major disaster declaration is signed and ready to go. We have everybody ready in Puerto Rico, the Gulf Coast, Louisiana, and also on the forest fires in California. So we have a great team. Unfortunately, we have some very, very uh, powerful natural disasters. On the therapeutics front, this is what I've been looking to do for a long time. This is a great thing. Today, I'm pleased to make a truly historic announcement in our battle against the China virus that will save countless lives. The FDA has issued an emergency use authorization, and uh, that's such a, a powerful term, emergency use authorization for a treatment known as convalescent plasma. This is a uh, powerful therapy that transfuses very, very strong antibodies from the blood of recovered patients to help treat patients battling a current infection. It's had an incredible rate of success. Today's action will dramatically expand access to this treatment. And I want to thank Dr. Hahn and uh, Secretary Azar, I want to thank the FDA, all of the people that have been working very hard on this. It showed tremendous potential. This is the only possible, and, and it's only made possible because of Operation Warp Speed. That is, everybody working together. We're years ahead of approvals. We would be if we went by the speed levels of past administration, we'd be two years, three years behind where we are today. And that includes in vaccines that you'll be hearing about very soon, very shortly. To deliver treatments and vaccine to save lives, we're removing unnecessary barriers and delays, not by cutting corners, but by marshalling the full power of the federal government. We provided $48 million to fund the Mayo Clinic study that tested the efficacy of convalescent plasma for patients with the virus. Through this study, over 100,000 Americans have already enrolled to receive this treatment, and it has proven to reduce mortality by 35 percent. It's a tremendous number. The FDA, MIT, Harvard, and Mount Sinai Hospital have also found convalescent plasma to be a very effective method of fighting this horrible disease. Based on the science and the data, the FDA has made the independent determination that the treatment is safe and very effective. Recently, we provided up to $270 million to the American Red Cross and America's Blood Centers to support the collection of up to 360,000 units of plasma. In late July, we launched a nationwide campaign to ask patients to have — who have recovered. And these are patients that have been incredible, the way they've uh, donated. But these are people recovered from the virus to donate plasma. Since then, weekly plasma donations have doubled. And today, I once again urge all Americans who have recovered from the virus to go to coronavirus.gov and sign up and donate plasma today, please. It's been uh, really an incredible — just incredible people. The country has uh, united so strongly behind this. And I'll go over the numbers, but if you look at what's happened and the success that we've had that people don't talk about. The United States has experienced the lowest case fatality rate of any major country in the world. You don't hear that. The European Union's case fatality rate is estimated to be three times higher than that in the United States. Europe has seen 33 percent more fatalities compared to a typical non-pandemic year than the United States. And I just want to uh, ask two of our people that have done such a fantastic job, Alex Azar and Stephen Hahn, to say a few words. And, Stephen, I want to thank you, because the FDA really stepped up, and especially over the last few days in getting this done. The results have been incredible. And I think you'll see the results even go up very substantially. So we appreciate it. And maybe I'll ask Alex to go first, and then Stephen. Thank you very much, Alex. Well, thank you very much, Mr. President. Uh, thanks for the bold leadership that allowed us to deliver this very happy news today. Thanks to your All of America approach, 
America has done more than any other country to expand the arsenal that we have to battle COVID-19. And thanks to early efforts by your administration, Americans have broader access to these treatments, including convalescent plasma, than patients anywhere else in the world. In early April, early in our fight against COVID-19, the FDA, BARDA, the Mayo Clinic, and other partners sprang into action to set up an expanded access protocol for this promising treatment. President Trump is the right to try president, and he's fought hard to ensure that Americans can have access to promising COVID-19 treatments. Convalescent plasma has been a tried and true therapeutic method in prior outbreaks, but the president wanted to ensure that we develop the data to support its use, and this FDA authorization is one result of that effort. The data we gathered suggests that patients who were treated early in their disease course, within three days of being diagnosed, with plasma containing high levels of antibodies, benefited the most from treatment. We saw about a 35% better survival in the patients who benefited most from the treatment, which were patients under 80 who were not on artificial respiration. I just want to emphasize this point because I don't want you to gloss over this, this number. We dream in drug development of something like a 35% mortality reduction. This is a major advance in the treatment of patients. This is a major advance. Convalescent plasma is one new tool that we've added to our arsenal against COVID-19 alongside remdesivir, steroids, and a number of other promising options currently being studied. Because of the President's Operation Warp Speed, we expect to have other new results and new options reaching patients as soon as this fall. Operation Warp Speed is supporting experimental therapeutics all the way through to manufacturing so that if they meet FDA's gold standard for safety and efficacy, they can begin reaching patients without a day wasted. Americans who have tested positive for and recovered from COVID-19 can go to coronavirus.gov to find out a quick, convenient way to play a potentially life-saving role in our fight. No, if you donate plasma, you could save a life. We've also provided guidance so healthcare providers can contact patients who have recovered from COVID-19 and give them information on how they can donate. So thank you again, Mr. President, for supporting this remarkable progress against COVID-19. And I want to thank Dr. Hahn, Dr. Marks, and the entire team at the FDA for the speed with which they've approached us, the diligence to ensure that this meets the standards at FDA. And I'll turn it over to Dr. Hahn if that's okay, Mr. President. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President, for your leadership. Um, it's good to be here today to announce um, FDA's recent decision. From the beginning of this pandemic, the President has asked FDA to cut back red tape to try to speed medical products into the hands of providers, patients, and American consumers. And I just want to echo the President's thanks to the more than 17,000 men and women who work at uh, FDA. They have worked day and night to, in fact, do that. So plasma is the liquid portion of the blood. Um, that liquid portion contains the natural immunity that someone develops in response to an infection, in this case, COVID-19. Um, and that liquid portion can be extracted and for many years, as the President and Secretary Azar said, has been given to patients with infectious diseases for more than 100 years. So there was a really good rationale for why this might work. Um, and in fact, as was mentioned, um, in early April, it, an expanded access program was started at the Mayo Clinic with the support of the federal government under uh, President Trump's leadership. And that has gone on for the last four months. More than uh, 90,000, close to 100,000 Americans have enrolled in this uh, program, and over 70,000 have received treatment. This is one of the largest expanded access programs um, in the history of FDA, so a very successful uh, approach to evaluating how convalescent plasma uh, would work. So in the independent judgment of experts and expert scientists at FDA who have reviewed the totality of data, not just the data from this expanded access program, but more than a, a dozen published studies, as well as the historical experience associated with this, those, those scientists have concluded that COVID-19 convalescent pl plasma is safe and shows promising efficacy, thereby meeting the criteria for an emergency use authorization. In the optimal treatment, uh, the optimal patients as described by Secretary Azar, treated with convalescent plasma at the highest titers, there was a 35% improvement in survival, which is a significant clinical benefit.
Now we're waiting for more data. We're going to continue to gather data, but this clearly meets the criteria that we've established for emergency use authorization, and we're very pleased with these results. So let me just put this in perspective. Many of you know I was a cancer doctor before I uh, became FDA commissioner, and a 35 percent improvement um, in survival is a pretty substantial clinical benefit. What that means is, if, and if the data continue to pan out, 100 people who are sick with COVID-19, 35 would have been saved because of the administration of uh, plasma. We've seen a great deal of demand for this from doctors around the country. Um, and what this EUA does, EUA emergency use authorization today does, it allows us to continue that and meet the demand. And again, I want to echo the President's and the Secretary's uh, uh, ask of the American people, if you've recovered from COVID-19, uh, please donate. It uh, could save a life. And Mr. President, thank you again. Thank you very much, Stephen. I appreciate it. Okay, any questions? Mr. President. Mr. President. Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President. I want to first ask you about the COVID-19 drugs that are in phase three. Are they going to be available to the American population? On You and I have talked previously about this idea of right to try. Right. Can we assure the American people that if it's being studied and it's in phase three, you have that right? You know, it's a great question. And I'm not sure a lot of people have been thinking about right to try. We're all waiting for the final answer. And maybe I could ask uh, Stephen, but I would say that right to try is exactly if somebody is virtually terminal, in other words, they're not going to make it. And if we have these incredible uh, therapies and drugs that are happening, Alex, I think it's a very interesting question. I congratulate you for that question, because I think we're, we're all waiting for that exact final endpoint. What about that, Stephen? We have all of these great seemingly great answers that are ready to come out, but because of the process it takes, can we use some of this early under right to try, please? So it's a really good question. Um, and of course, um, it all depends on the clinical circumstances and what a doctor and a patient together decide with respect to the administration of any agent. But if you think about what happened with convalescent plasma and the expanded access program, this is exactly what happened. This program, so we have ongoing clinical trials that are randomized between placebo or an inactive substance and the convalescent plasma. While that was going on, we knew that there was great demand from patients and doctors. The expanded access program is a way of actually doing that and, and fits perfectly with what the President just said about allowing people to be able to use something that we have now determined to be very safe. I think it's something we have to really consider very strongly. Yes, sir. I think it's fantastic. You should get credit for that. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you. That's very good. Mr. President. Uh, please back. OAN. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, convalescent plasma as a treatment has been around for nearly 100 years. Um, you mentioned warp, Operation Warp Speed, which enabled this process to move along a lot faster. Uh, what, into the, what went into the effort for uh, this to be approved for COVID-19? And was that holdup political in nature? Well, I think that there might have been a hold up, but we broke the logjam over the last uh, week, to be honest. I think that there are people uh, in the FDA and actually in your larger department that can uh, see things being held up and wouldn't mind so much. It's my opinion, a very strong opinion, and that's for political reasons. This has nothing to do with politics. This has to do with life and death. So we are being very strong and we are being very forthright and we have got some incredible answers and we're not going to let them be held up because every day is lives and we're not going to let that happen. Okay? Very good. Thank you. Uh, Mr. President, um, in announcing this today, you said that the FDA has made the independent determination that the treatment is safe and very effective. Yet Dr. Hahn just said it was showing promising efficacy. So, so which of the two is correct? Well, I think I'll let Dr. Hahn answer that question. So under our legal authority for emergency use authorization, this is not the same as an approval, but it's an authorization and allows us to expand the access to this. And our data, we know we're going to continue to collect data. We knew that for all of our e emergency use authorizations. So, for example, remdesivir, which approved, was approved or authorized on May 1st, we're still collecting data, and we will continue to do that with plasma as well. So it's the nuances of the language around the authorization that we use and the legal aspects. It's a promising treatment. It's not, you couldn't say it's very effective just yet. So I would say that a 35, if you're one of those 35 out of 100 people who uh, these data suggest or show, survive as a result of it, this is pretty significant for that person and their family. Okay. This is a very big day. It's a day we've been looking forward to. 
Thank you very much. Great question. Was there pressure on you, Dr. Hahn, to authorize this? Mr. Dr. Hahn, could you answer that question? Was there pressure to Dr. Hahn to authorize this? You didn't answer the question. None of you answered the question. The FDA is a very strange organization that has a history of not making science-based, rational-based decisions about its approvals. It, this was started in, most noticeably in 1987 when people with AIDS in New York City were dying of what is called pneumocystis pneumonia, PCP. And the clinical experience in, then had been amassed of a large number of cases who were prevented from dying by use of the antibiotic Bactrim. This is, even then, was a generic medication and cheap. And uh, activists obtained a, um, a, a meeting with Dr. Fauci and 15 of his selected scientists at FDA, at NIH, and asked Dr. Fauci just to make guidelines to physicians that they consider using Bactrim to treat preventively AIDS people so that they wouldn't die of this pneumonia. Dr. Fauci refused. He said, I want randomized, controlled, blinded, controlled trial evidence. That's my gold standard, that or nothing. The, the activists left. The NIH did not fund any randomized trials. They raised money themselves from their own AIDS patients to collect the data to do a randomized trial. It took them two years. They came back to Dr. Fauci. During those two years, the FDA approved a, uh, AZT as a treatment for AIDS. AZT works, but not completely. It needs other medications as well. And during the, the, the two years that it took them to get this data to come back to Dr. Fauci to support using Bactrim, 17,000 people with AIDS died because of Dr. Fauci's insistence on not allowing even a statement supporting consideration of the use. This has gone on before. Now we have Dr. Fauci denying that any evidence exists of benefit, and that's pervaded the FDA. The FDA has relied on Dr. Fauci and his NIH advisory groups to make the a statement saying that there is no benefit of using hydroxychloroquine in outpatients. And this is counter to the facts of the case. The evidence is overwhelming. The FDA has also said that there is the harm of using these medications in outpatients overweighs the benefit. And in fact, they said this with no information, no evidence whatsoever of any harm in outpatient use. And this is provable both on, by the fact that, that the FDA's webpage says, has a warning against outpatient use, but relies, says it relies on inpatient hospital data, which means they don't have any outpatient data, as well as the fact that 90% of the cases of, of uh, COVID this year have occurred since the, the time that the FDA restricted usage to inpatients only. So the FDA knows that it has no data for outpatients and no data on harm, and yet it, it, it denied the Henry Ford petition for outpatient usage. Dr. Fauci and the FDA are doing the same thing that was done in 1987, and that's led to the deaths of hundreds of thousands of Americans who could have been saved by usage of this drug. And this is the same thing that the FDA has done. It's outrageous. People need to be writing or calling their congressmen and senators and complaining that this is not the way the country should work, that a bureaucracy that, that's in bed with other forces that are causing them to make decisions that are not based on the science that is killing Americans is not acceptable. Well, at a minimum, they ought to be reaching out to experts like you and experts all over the country who have something to contribute to this. I mean, after all, it's a pandemic and constantly going on TV and telling everybody to wear a mask over and over and over again and, and social distancing, uh, that doesn't sound very scientific to me. I want to thank you, Dr. Risch, for your courage, for your insight, for publishing what you're publishing. I know that it can't be easy.